Hey there, I hope you're having a great day so far. Today I'm really excited to share with you one of my favorite types of images. These sort of dynamic floating cluster product photos. Now this image here was created for our client Milko and the goal was to show off their entire product line in a single attention grabbing shot. So these photos look very high end but they actually don't take a ton of gear or kind of complex setup to pull off. All that's required is a little bit of planning and a lot of patience in Photoshop. So let's dive right into the shoot and I'll take you through it. So the first thing I like to do is get our main kind of product up. In this photo, you can see that there's like a singular hero product in the middle that everything else is gonna be built around. So I like to get that up, set it up first, and then we can kind of set up the camera and lighting around it afterwards. Now, I'm just positioning this on a very small stand, light stand, and I have a super clamp on top of it just to give it a little nice base. And on that super clamp, I'm actually gonna put some sticky tack just to get that bottle on there really solid. Now, with all of the bottles in this cluster, they're all empty because you really want it to be as lightweight as possible to allow yourself kind of flexibility and freedom in positioning it. So get your main hero bottle in there, and then we're gonna next move on to positioning the camera. Now for this photo, you're really gonna need a tripod because essentially we're gonna you know, take a series of frames and comp them all together. And if your camera keeps moving and your angle keeps moving, that's gonna make that very difficult. So get a tripod and just be careful not to hit it or move it kind of as you're working on the scene. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna frame up our sort of central hero product in the frame but just make sure you leave yourself quite a bit of room on the sides as all the other products are gonna come in and we need to account for that. Once I have the hero bottle in place and I have the camera framed up, I'm gonna start working on the lighting. You know, everything in this image is gonna be comped together, including the background and just all the pieces floating. So I'm actually using pretty simple lighting, but you gotta keep in mind all the other objects that are gonna join your hero objects in the final image. And just make sure there's nothing kind of competing in shadows where it's gonna look really fake. So I'm kind of positioning my light in a way where you know things won't cast too many shadows on each other in the final image. So here I'm using some sticky tack. If you've seen our previous videos, you've probably seen me use this quite a bit. It's very common and it's reusable and just let you stick things to it. I'm wrapping it around the stand and the idea here was to really uh, you know, be able to just like stick a bottle on there and position it wherever we want. Unfortunately, in practice, it wasn't quite holding it as much as I would have liked. So I kind of changed it up and used tape ultimately. But, you know, you can attach it however you want. You just want to make sure nothing's going kind of like over your product. Everything should be kind of behind so you can easily remove it when you close crop the products. So once you've figured out a way to attach the bottle or whatever you're shooting uh, to your, you know, in this case, a C-stand arm for us, um, you could just as easily kind of hold it with your hand and you can see later on uh, some of the products I do do that for. But this allows you to kind of position it a little more accurately. So I'm keeping that main hero bottle in place and now I'm just gonna go through each product and kind of imagining where it is in you know, 3D space. Maybe it's helpful to draw a little diagram first, but Every time I do a shoot of a new product, you know, I do a, a few photos, kind of like moving it around a little bit. So not just that one single image. That way in post, I have a little more freedom. You also want to give yourself a little bit more room, maybe kind of keep some space between the products. So then you can kind of hide them in behind each other after. But again, because the shadows kind of cast on each other, you want to make sure that at least they're sort of somewhat in the right place. And basically now it's about going through all the products that you have and kind of capturing them in the right section and just creating a bunch of plates. Um, for the bottles, I just move them around because they're fairly light. With the kind of smaller bottles and containers, you know, the product was still in it, so they're quite heavy. So for those, I just use my hands and you just gotta be careful to hold it in a way so that when you cut out the product, your hand won't be visible at all. Now that you've gone through all the products that are gonna end up in that final floating cluster and captured them in a variety of positions, you know, making sure you leave a little bit of room, giving yourself some variations. But once you've gone through and have all the ingredients you need for the final image, it's time to take it all back to your computer and dive into Photoshop. The first thing I'm gonna do is go through in Lightroom and pick my main select for each product. You know, that's the images we're gonna be working on. 
And I'm also gonna just copy over the settings. And this is a great place to kind of, you know, tweak all your settings, make sure your color balance is right. And you just need to copy those settings over across all of the images. I'm gonna be assuming uh, you're shooting with flash. You know, if you're shooting with available light, there might be some variations. So I would almost recommend against that, creating these sort of uh, composite images with natural light. But if you're using flash, all of it should be shot in the same conditions on the same settings so that when you sync your settings in Photoshop, it all comes together and has a uniform look to it. I'll be honest, this next part is kind of the most tedious, annoying part of this whole process because we have to cut out every single product individually. Now, I'm lucky these products have a pretty simple profile, so I'm just using a pen tool and going through it and one shot at a time, cutting each piece out and just stacking them all on independent layers so I can move them around. It's gonna take some time. There's no easy way around it unless you kind of shoot on a green screen, but that introduces its own variables of color casts. So, you know, cutting out with a pen allows you to create these really nice crisp edges, which I really like. So go ahead, throw on a nice podcast. If you're looking for something to listen to, I highly recommend Newcomers, Science Versus, or Dead Eyes is a great one as well. So throw one of those on and get to close cropping. Whew, that was hard. Now that everything's cut out, it's time to get back into the fun zone. And well, it's terrible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna position all the products in their kind of like ideal spot. Now, I know we had a bit of a plan when we were starting out as to where each product would go, but obviously as you start working on it, you know, all of them, you're doing them individually, you really are now gonna design the final look and the final cluster. So just move the products around, you know, the shadows should more or less line up. If they don't perfectly, it's usually okay and we're gonna add some sort of shadows, additional shadows to the image at the end. But this is the moment where you just kind of play with the positioning of everything for a while until you get it looking just right. Now I'm gonna create a little bit of a scene for these products to exist in. And basically it's gonna be a backdrop with a sort of bottom surface that they're gonna be floating over. And that's really gonna kind of amplify the floating illusion. And also we'll get to kind of play with the gradients on the backdrop and the kind of bottom of it so that kind of almost adding more lights in a sense without needing to. So feel free to get creative, you know, I'm just throwing a nice uh, sort of like radial gradient on it and as well on the bottom. So as if there's a spotlight, but you could just as easily kind of put in like different leaf effects or patterns on the background, you know, make it really dark, make it really bright. This is where you're gonna really give the image a lot of character into how you sort of set dress the scene. Now that we've got everything in place, we have the main backdrop and kind of bottom of the image done. We're gonna work on the shadows that our floating products are gonna cast on the bottom. So if we imagine there's a sort of light coming from the top, which is more or less how we lit it, it's a little bit of an angle, but the products are pretty close to the bottom and I almost find like the closer you bring the products to the bottom, the more realistic that floating illusion is, like almost like they just lifted off. So, we're gonna create a few different shadows um, and I'm basically going through and thinking about, you know, what's the shape of each object that's casting a shadow and kind of creating a loose shape like that on the bottom as well. And also just changing their opacity little by little, depending if something's higher up or further away, you know, there should be some variance in that and also like overlapping of shadows. Now we're really entering the final stretch of this operation and essentially, you know, Shadows are done, background's done, products are in the right spot. We're gonna go through and as you kind of finalize the color in the background, you're gonna see anywhere where you kind of like didn't cut out the pieces quite perfectly and there's some of the white background or white edge bleeding through. So I like to just go in real close with a brush and just kind of clean up any of those little flashes. Um, at the same time, this is a good stage to do cleanup on the product images. You know, often I do the cleanup first, but for this image, it's actually kind of nice to do it a little later because some things end up getting hidden or cut out and there's no point in doing retouching that's gonna be not visible. So I'm gonna go through, clean everything up, and then we're gonna be on the final step, which is kind of creating the shadows on the actual bottles. 
um, kind of from things that would be near each other, but maybe weren't when we actually shot it. The image is almost done, but for the last kind of steps, I would recommend just going through and doing a couple final passes on tone and color on the entire image overall. This gives it a nice unified look because there's some kind of similarity between you know, how you apply the edits. And I also really recommend that you add grain or noise to anything that you retouched heavily or just created from scratch. In our case, it's you know all the blemishes were removed with a clone stamp. Anytime it's not done at 100% opacity, you end up with kind of like blurry, textureless pieces amongst like textured image. And similarly in the background, you know, your products will have a little bit of noise and grain in them, but the background will be completely clean, which is a dead giveaway. So you wanna add noise into each of those elements and just match it to kind of match your products. Um, this is a good reason to keep all your files kind of clean and separate, you know, don't like compress a lot of layers and like add it on top again and again. Keep your files and all the pro objects and layers independent of each other. Make sure they're well named and organized as this will make it a lot easier to do any revisions down the line. And for this project specifically, the client actually came back and requested us to make a lighter version of it that was based on another image we delivered. And if we had compressed all our layers and kind of worked in a destructive way, that would be very difficult. But because everything was organized, it didn't take too much time and we were able to make them happy, create an easy extra option for us. And from posting on Instagram, a lot of you seem to like the pink version more. So I'd love to know what you think here. Do you like the bold red image or do you like the kind of lighter, airier pink image more? Let us know down in the comments below. And if you're new here, please hit subscribe. You know, we release videos almost every week about photography, videography, and just living a sustainable creative life. So I'd love for you to join us. We recently passed a thousand subs and kind of keep on growing from here. So please hit subscribe. If you found this video helpful or interesting, give it a like. And more than anything, it would help us if you shared it. If you're on, you know, photography Facebook groups, Reddit, wherever it is that your community lives, I'd love for you to share this video. My name is Eugene from Workerby Supply, and it's been a blast showing you how this image came together, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.